By the fall of 1891, W.P. Bowen, a newly hired physical education instructor, was named as the new football coach. Unfortunately, he knew nothing about football, but nevertheless led the team to victory over Doan by winning the season's opening game 28-4. Sadly, two weeks later, the two teams had a rematch, and this time Doan defeated Nebraska, giving the NU football team its first loss. The second game with the Doan College team was played at Crete on Saturday, November 14th, and the U of N died hard, but she died, and that was sufficient for Doan. Doan is to be congratulated. Her teamwork was excellent, and she well deserves her first victory over our team. What lost the game for us today, was asked us. Lack of team practice and poor luck, we answered. Perhaps it is not best to win all the time. Final score, Doan 14, Nebraska 12. The lack of coaching skills by W.P. Bowen put the Nebraska football team at a disadvantage, right when they needed it the most, because the next game would be its first against a major university, and would be the biggest challenge the Nebraska team had encountered yet. They were about to battle the Iowa Hawkeyes. Organized as an intramural club sport in 1872, the University of Iowa played its first officially recognized varsity game in 1889 and soon became a major team in the Midwest. In order to help the Nebraska Bug Eaters prepare for the first Nebraska-Iowa game, legend has it that the Iowa football coach, T.U. Lyman, had an idea. He would not only coach his own team, but that of his opponent as well. That's a great moment in sports history, if you ask me. You know, there's this potential budding rivalry, and it's the first time that Nebraska plays Iowa. Of course, Nebraska is concerned about its readiness to play a school that has a real team and a coach, and Nebraska really has neither. And uh, the beautiful thing is that I was equally concerned about playing a team that has no, no coach and, and no skills and no knowledge. So they very generously send their coach over to help the Nebraska team get ready for the game. I think that's a beautiful moment in football history. Iowa needs an opponent to play and they need people of similar talent. And Nebraska was getting there and Iowa knew that. So providing help and assistance was not wholly unusual. Iowa. Uh, was very much advanced. They had already developed the system of audibles and calling plays at the line of scrimmage, which Nebraska had never done. Uh, there was a game against Iowa where the players would line up at the beginning of the game and suddenly the Iowa quarterback started barking out letters and numbers, A, Z, right, left, and Nebraska players were standing around having no idea what was happening, what, what, he, what he was saying. And after the game, Iowa took him aside and taught him. This is what we're doing. We're changing the plays. We're talking about the plays and giving assignments. And it changed the concept for Nebraska of how to play. They understood a little differently. Uh, so it's kind of like tennis. You get better when you play tennis against somebody who's as good or better than you. Playing against somebody who's worse than you doesn't make you a better player. About 60 brazen-throated and brazen-flagged enthusiasts went up to Omaha to witness the Nebraska-Iowa game Thanksgiving Day. Nebraska was not in the score, losing to Iowa by 22 points but played well nevertheless. Very well, considering that this is the first time she has ever played an old established team. It was a much better game than the score might indicate, and the U of N has no cause to be ashamed of the score. The idea of the wedge play was to have the players who were not carrying the ball line up in a V formation and lock their arms together, looking like a one great big Red Rover, Red Rover. The ball carrier or even two players who would hide the ball between them would stand behind that wedge and they would merely mass forward and try to push everybody out of the way. Worked very effectively, uh, but it also created a lot of injuries. Uh, one of the first things that the uh, university did was ban the interlocking of arms. That was th thought to hopefully solve the problem of too many bodies, too many heads, because one of the problems is you can't protect yourself when your arms are locked against uh, your neighbor, so your face and body were exposed and the defense knew that. So they eliminated the, uh, the locking of arms, but it still didn't uh, resolve the problem. That's when you started coming up with the line of scrimmage rules and having to create the buffer zone between the two teams and the requirement the players had to line up on the line of scrimmage, it was to get rid of the wedge play. So the lineup that we see today, the line of scrimmage, came about because of the effectiveness of the wedge play. Today, historians have learned a surprising truth about T.U. Lyman and his role in coaching the first Nebraska-Iowa game. 
in the process of, of doing some research for some of the projects I've done. I went back and I, I looked through the list of Iowa head, University of Iowa head coaches. Well, there is no T.U. Lyman that was ever a coach at Iowa. T.U. Lyman played at Iowa College in Grinnell. He had played there and had had success against the University of Iowa in three consecutive seasons before 1891. So Lyman, who had been a player at Iowa College in Grinnell, came to Lincoln and prepared Nebraska to play at the University of Iowa. He was from Iowa College in Grinnell. He wasn't from the University of Iowa.